So for those of you who are a little bit confused with index fossils, and a number of you had a lot of questions about it and realized that we could have ruled it out a little bit better, but here we are trying to explain what's going on. So for index fossils, Basically, the idea is that there are rock layers around the world that are separated by oceans, valleys, canyons, etc. But using index fossils, we can actually piece together which layers go together. Um, so we um, can you also use the law of lateral continuity that states that similar rocks with similar fossils um, are were originally laid down as one giant layer that stretched across this whole area. And then over time, there were things like erosion and weathering that took place or a plate tectonic shift, which we'll learn about later, um, that actually separated these layers from one another. So in this picture, you can use the fact that this fossil and this fossil are in this layer. Um, and then they're also found in this layer over here. And here you can see this pink one, this ammonite, as you can tell from up here, this ammonite is found only in this layer, only in this dark brown layer. So you know that that means that all of these go together, even though this fossil appears in numerous different places. Um, the ammonite only occurs in one layer, and it was widespread across the earth. So we can use that ammonite to line everything up so that we know that all of those layers go together. Um, you cannot use a fossil such as the gastropod because the gastropods are found all over the place um, in multiple rock layers and in multiple locations. So it does not help you to match anything up because this layer could have gone with this layer. It could have gone with this layer. It could have gone with this layer. We have no idea because it's so common and it spans such a wide period of time. So that's why for index fossils, they have to be fossils that occurred in a very short period of time. They were only alive for a certain period. And then also they have to stretch across multiple continents. So we can actually use them to match up the rock layers together. So that's the basics for index fossils. Um, so here's an example. Um, so again, the two things that you want to look for are fossils that are found only in one layer and then also fossils that are found across multiple locations. So these are called outcrops or they're basically just rock samples that are taken from different locations around the world. So um, for this one, this is not an index fossil. <clears throat> because it's only found in this one location and it's not found anywhere else in the world. Um, same thing for the majority of these, they're only found in one location. This one is found in two locations. So this is one location, two locations, three locations. So this one is found in two locations. However, if you look at the background, the two rock layers don't actually match up. So what that means is this animal or creature lived in this time period in this area and then it lived in a different time period in another area. So we cannot use them to match up the rock layers and to relative date them. What we can use, however, is this right here. So this is a fossil. It's a trilobite. Um, and you can see that it lived here. It also lived here. And it also lived down here. So, um, sorry, it's getting blocked, but um, it lived in these locations. You can also tell that the kind of rock that is behind it um, is actually um, the same. So, that means that the trilobite lived in the same time period across the world. I'm just going to exit out of it because you guys can't see that. Um, so, here it is. It lived in this time period, in this time period. Um, and in this time period. So we can use this to actually date the rocks across the continents and line them up so that we can tell which rocks are older and which rocks are younger. So um, that's exactly what we did. So now we actually shifted the rock layers from outcrop two and outcrop three. We moved them up so that we can actually know that this is one giant layer that goes all together. And so now we can actually see that these layers are actually lower or older than all of these layers. And that helps us to be able to date things relatively to one another. So we know that these creatures lived before these creatures did. Um, so that's what. Um, index fossils are used for is to help us make connections across different locations and to date things in time. Um, so here is another example 
Um, so as you guys can see in the video, this person is crossing out all the things that are found in multiple layers. Because again, you want fossils that, for index fossils, you want to find fossils that are found in only one layer, but they're found in multiple locations. So they are crossing out all the fossils that are found in multiple layers because that means that this animal lived across a wide span of time and that's not going to help us date anything because if you have someone who lived for a hundred years that <clears throat> that doesn't help you <coughs> excuse me that doesn't help you to be able to figure out what happened in 1947 because that person lived for such a long period of time that you have no idea when these things happened in their lives um so that's why we need to look for something that was alive during a very short period of time so that we can actually say definitively that this does match up with this time period. <clears throat> there are some animals that have survived literally for millions of years. And we want things that have only been alive for a shorter period of time so that we can date them better. So um, the first thing that you want to do is to cross out all of the index fossils that are found in multiple layers. Um, so we crossed out these guys as well because they are found across many layers. And um, after that, you want to cross out the fossils that are also found in multiple layers as well. And they're also found across multiple different locations. And what that leaves you with are these guys. So these are the only ones that are index fossils. You can see that they're found in one time period, one layer, and then they're also found in multiple places around the world. So this allows us to be able to match up this entire rock layer across the face of the earth and to be able to relative date things around that one layer. So think of it like the KT boundary layer. It's like a bookmark. We know um, that the dinosaurs died after that time period, and we know that that rock layer had specific things inside of it, such as iridium, which comes from space, and therefore we can use that to date things all across the world and match things up all across the world. So here's another example from week four. Um, this was one of your challenges, and a lot of you guys uh, struggled with figuring out the index fossils, so I'm just going to walk you through how to do it. There are four index fossils here. So the first thing you want to do is cross out anything that's found in multiple time periods or layers. Um, so these two get crossed out, and so do these because they're found in multiple layers or across time periods. And these get crossed out as well. They're only found in one location, but they're found in multiple layers, which means they lived for a very long period of time. So they're not going to help us to be able to compare any of these layers because um, it doesn't even live in any other location. Um, likewise, these also lived in two different time periods, so we can't use it to line up the fossils and to see what lived in the same time period. Um, so therefore, we cross those out. We also cross out anything that's only found in one location, which is all of these guys that are in pink. They were only found once in the fossil record in one specific location. This shows up nowhere else in the world. Same with this guy, nowhere else in the world. So you really want something that was common, that was found across multiple locations, and something that only lived for a short period of time. And once you do that, you're left with these. So this fossil only lived in this one layer, and it also lived in multiple locations. We can call that an index fossil. This one also lived in multiple locations, and it only lived for a short period of time. Same with this one. It's only found in this row, um, and it's found in multiple locations. And then same thing, the trilobites at the bottom. Um, this thing is so annoying. The trilobites at the bottom, they um, were found across multiple locations as well. And trilobites are one of the most well-known index fossils because they were so commonplace all around the world. Um, so those are your index fossils. It's these four. Um, so hopefully that helps you to be able to identify index fossils, and that will help you to break out in the last clue. The last clue combines stratigraphy and index fossils. So if you don't remember stratigraphy or you need help with that, go ahead and check that video out as well. Um, but that's it. Hopefully you find that information helpful.